Hey guys, it's Cal from Dirty Weasel Media, and today we're going to be going over a little bit of base building. You know, as I scan around, you can see that the custom admin base that I use for my upcoming filming will be uh, here. And if you've seen my previous video on the syndicategaming.com, it was uh, stuck somewhere out, way out in the normal, out in the open, and uh, yeah, it uh, didn't have as many advantages as this. With the new Epoch 1.2.1 building system, they include cinder blocks and uh, opening garage doors. These things are pretty indestructible and uh, you can lock them so it's a big benefit. But I uh, wanted to give you a quick tour and out here you got uh, go through this door and it opens slowly up. You can see my new shooting pad and the range is out there. You know we uh, put this firehouse in so there's no zombie spawns here but uh, I want to secure it a little better and uh, and show you some of the things that we were doing as far as building. Now you can see I put up some cinder block walls all the way around here. Uh, there's uh, garage doors with cinder blocks on the uh, on the firehouse and I wanted to go through a building process to show you how to build a cinder block wall. Now in your industrial loot spawns you'll find cinder blocks and uh, mortar buckets. Basically these are the tools that you need to build a cinder block wall. But first, before we do that, we actually have to build something to build something. So we're going to put up a temporary workbench right here. But we've got to build that thing first. Let's uh, put it over here. We'll put it over here by the uh, Wildcat. And you can see for a workbench, you need two lumber and one plywood. Right click on that and craft workbench. Now you don't need a building to start work on a workbench. But. Uh, it is the first step in any building. Missing one more plywood. Okay, I screwed that up. So, I think sometimes it's good to have these things mess up. Anyways, make some more plywood. Oh, I guess, oh, that's right, I forgot. You don't need to do that. So, it's saying that if you have all that you need, it will continue to make stuff until it runs out of supplies and until you need more supplies. So, anyways, let's go ahead and set up that workbench. There it is. And you can see the uh, controls are basically page up, page down, to raise and lower it, then Q and E to flip it. Let's uh, go through this fast. There's down, there's up. And to flip it 180, hit Q or E. Right. You see it flipped. Flipped again. It doesn't really make a difference. And then when you're done setting it up, get the height that you want it. And just hit spacebar. And we're building our workbench. So let's go get the supplies that we need from our trusty desert schemed jackal. We need four cinder blocks and a bucket of motor. Let's grab that and come back over to our workbench. Now once again, right click, create half wall. That's what we need. So we're going to build that. I guess it was three cinder block walls and a mortar bucket. I always forget the recipes. It's always changing just a little bit. We'll put this one back so we don't get confused. Put that one back and we'll also build a cinder block garage doorway. So I'll get some more cinder blocks here. Another bucket of mortar. Go back over to our workbench. Hit gear and we'll build again. And you'll see garage doorway.
And once again, that takes three and one. So we now have a doorway and a short wall. Put back that center block. Okay, got to take cover, guys. We're getting under fire. I will continue this shortly after I take care of those uh, bandits. I have AI on this, and occasionally they get a little rambunctious. So I'll continue this in a moment. Okay, we've set back up here. I took care of those bandits, and uh, we're back at the building. I've got that cinder block garage doorway ready to go. We'll go ahead and get lined up. I think I'll put it right about here, lined up with that. Leave the chopper space over there. We'll eventually have uh, some wooden buildings, uh, fortifications on either side of the garage doorway, but it'll be opening through the building. So what you want to do is go to your gear, right-click on garage doorway, and it pops up. It's transparent, so it just kind of helps a little bit. You can move it around. You can see the controls once again, page up, page down for raising it. Now, it's always better to do this with two people, but uh, we don't quite have that luxury today. Look down. Yeah, that's a little bit out. Twist a little bit. Now, there was a timer on this. You can see I accidentally hit spacebar, but if you move quickly, you can go ahead and and stop it while you're in the middle of the construction process. That's AI Chopper. Military. I don't worry about him too much. So let's try that again. And that looks pretty good right there. Whoop, I forgot one last thing. Now, as I struggle with this, I keep forgetting things you have to do. Because you can raise it up and raise it down, you can go ahead and move it into a better position as far as getting vehicles in and out. Now, certain vehicles like the Jackal, for instance, because it is quite tall, and you have to do this with the Urals as well, you have to raise it up. And we'll go ahead page up two, three. Three is what I found works really well for this, so you can get your jackal in and out. But uh, once you build the garage door in place, you can't roll underneath it, but you can fit through it. So we've, we're building it right now. Stage one of three. You're kind of vulnerable in this. Be careful, especially on an AI server like this. And now you've constructed a blocked doorway. Okay. So let's just go ahead and do a little test with the Jackal. Oh, he's getting on the wrong side of these damn British vehicles. And we're through. So at three, three clicks up from gone level, you can definitely get vehicles in and out. Uh, Jackal's pretty damn tall, so it uh, it's my standard for what I think everything needs to be up and down for to get vehicles in and out. Now we want to upgrade that. So we're going to look for some metal poles. We need three of these. Two, three, and three tank traps. One, two, three. Now what you're going to do is come over and upgrade block doorway and you hit that and boom you got yourself a door there you are throw a lock on that and uh, you've got yourself a locked doorway and it'll give you a code to unlock that doorway and write that down so you can remember it and uh, I'm not too worried about doing that right now I'll finish the rest of the block wall and make any adjustments as needed so we built another half block wall let's grab that real fast Now, my guess is I doubt this will make it all the way across, but we'll find out. If we need to, it's okay. We'll just play adjustments later on. Yeah, there's going to be a gap. I'm not that concerned about that. You know, if it has a little gap in it, I'm not really worried about it.
Hmm, quite a bit of a gap, actually. So what we're going to do is cut half the distance. Go down this way a little bit. Check our sight lines. It looks pretty good right there, actually. So we'll go ahead and build there. What this means is that I'm going to be a little short on materials, but uh, let's just see what we got in our bucket. In our so we got bucket, three more, three more cinder blocks. Come on, there we go. And we'll build one more wall just to make everything tight. Now what I have found is that the parts do move a little bit. You can see little gaps here and there. Because the database sees them as vehicles, It's uh, they do move a little bit, but that's okay. It's not anything they can shoot through or anything like that. Let's set up this last wall. I think that looks pretty good right there. We'll go ahead and build that. And uh, you can see it seamlessly puts them all in, in alignment and uh, kind of blends it all in if they're close enough. So you don't worry about that too much. So let's check our doorway. I don't think I made any mis major mistakes. Whoop. Except that it in, opens in, but that's not a big deal. If you wanted to face it around the other direction, have it open out, you could do that. But in works just fine. So I'm going to go grab some more supplies, and I will be back to go to step two of this uh, cinder block build, which is to continue upgrades and to show you how to upgrade and maintain your cinder block walls. So here we are, the last step. We're going to go ahead and upgrade these. Uh, walls and upgrade the door so it's a locked doorway we'll show you that real fast let me close this door since it's open in you gotta just step out of the way a little bit now the final step will show you how to upgrade block garage door there goes a little lock on the side you can see it come up and there's our combo 772 i'm not really worried about you guys seeing that because uh, it will be changed in the database um and there you are so you come up you unlock your door and it pops up your little tumbler. Oh, I forgot the code, 772 I think it was. And hit unlock. There we go. Now it can be unlocked. And raised up. Now that code you only need to enter once per server restart. You can come over here and close the door. It's always best to do it on the side so you don't get smacked by your own door. And we'll lock it. And there you go. It's a locked garage door. Pretty cool, huh? So we'll go ahead and uh, upgrade this wall right here. We'll see this real fast. You can walk up to the wall. You hit upgrade half cinder block wall. In my gear, I have four cinder blocks and a mortar. That's why I always get confused about stuff like that because it's a different amount. So upgrade cinder block wall. And there you go. Just that fast. So that's a pretty tall wall. Um, I've hit it with a jackal on doing tests, it don't move. I've hit it with satchel charges. They don't blow up. And this is a great tool if you're trying to build a base. But there are some built-in downsides. You have to maintain this wall constantly. Now, Epoch developers set up a six-day default, so you have to maintain them every six days. But there are configurations in there that you can change it as a server admin to a number of days. I have mine set at 32. That way, you figure once a month, go out around and upgrade all your stuff. And we're going to just do a quick upgrade real fast. And let's just maintain this. Grab some cinder blocks. There we go. 
And we're going to see what it needs to maintain. I've never actually done this before. We'll see what happens. So maintain half center block wall. I need one more bucket of mortar. Okay, well, we need more mortar. Looks like we need mortar and cinder blocks to do both. So we have two cinder blocks and a mortar. Let's see if there's anything else we need. You have repaired half cinder block wall. Let's see what it, how much you used. So it used, oh, it just, you don't need cinder block to repair a cinder block wall. You need mortar. Okay. That's for the half wall. Let's see what it takes for the the main wall here. Maintain cinder block wall. And a bucket of mortar. So it looks like you just need to collect tons and tons of mortar to um, put this stuff back into shape. And then what that does, it resets the database to the new date. So you reset that 32-day counter on your database on my server, or it can be whatever your server admin is set up. So there we go. Um, we have upgraded. Let's see if we uh, have any more stuff here. Uh, I could get some more cinder blocks and some more mortar, but we're running short on supplies. So one last thing. You always want to pick up your remove workbench. Pick that up. Now one important note I forgot to mention is you with 1.0.2.1 you can now build anywhere without a plot pole. Now plot poles are uh, good things to have if there are deconstructables because it prevents them from taking it up rather quickly and actually will break tools and whatnot but you can still remove things but you notice there's no remove on cinder block walls so no one can remove this and uh, Putting a plot pole down also has another purpose. It prevents other people from building next to your building. So what that means is no one can block your doorways, that sort of thing. And I'll probably put up a, a do not enter sign somewhere near here. But uh, that's step one. You know, set up your little indestructible brick wall and uh, start building inside. I usually build with lumber because it's a lot easier to find. And I can save my supplies to repair and build more brick walls. So there you go. There's step one of building a secure base. You know, we've got, you know, used a little bit of building space, used a lot of brick walls to fence in an area. So I hope you enjoyed that vehicle. <laughs> hope you enjoyed that little tutorial there. And uh, look for step two, step three, step however many I decide to do once I start putting down some floors and building some walls. So once again, this is Cal from Dirty Weasel Media. Look for our uh, website to be building slowly. I have to do it all myself. DirtyWeasel.com and uh, you can play on our server. I'll put the IP address in the closing credits. So have a good one and find some zombies to shoot today. <laughs>